All right, so let's take a look at an application of the sign law in a word problem where no hints are given and there's no diagram being um, pre-drawn for, uh, for the student. So this is going to force us to actually sketch the diagram through and look and analyze at what the problem is. So uh, the first thing I like to do with a word problem is we need to draw a, an image or a picture of what we're, we're looking at. So I always look at doing a sketch where we do a drawing and label. Okay, so that's really important. So I'm just gonna make the line a little thicker here so we can see it. So the first statement here says, two wires support a communication tower. So the tower is probably an important feature of this problem. So we're just gonna draw something that's gonna represent a tower and I'll sketch it out shaded in like that. It says the shorter of the two wires makes an angle with 41 degrees with the ground. So it looks like this tower is being held up by some wires. So what we'll do is we'll sketch a wire to the ground like this and the shorter of the two wires has an angle of 41 degrees with respect to the ground. So that is actually right here. So I'm going to mark it in with one mark and we'll label it as 41 degrees. Now it doesn't tell us uh, what the length is. And then the second part of that sentence says, well, the longer wire makes an angle of 35 degrees. So that would make sense. If you think about a longer angle being 35, having a 35 degree angle um, with the, because the wire is longer there. So we'll mark that in as 35 and I'm gonna put that in with two ticks to mark that it's a different angle. If the shorter wire is 72 meters long, so that's great. We know the length of this. Now, how long is the longer wire? So we can call this side as X. That is going to be what we need to find. So in a question like this, um, we now have a sketch of the situation. But what we would maybe like to do right now is let's try to simplify um, the diagram and let's to in order we can find the triangles. So in this case here, what I will call is we're going to simplify the diagram. Because now we have an, a picture of what the situation is, but what we're really after here is we're just looking at triangles. So that's all we're looking at trying to simplify. So how many triangles could we see in this, in this, uh, in this image? So to solve this problem, we, we're, we're looking for the unknown X, but we need to look at this in terms of um, how many triangles that this question can have. Because sometimes when you go through the problem, you, you need to kind of look at all the possibilities before we focus in on the one thing we want for the solution. So I actually see three triangles in this question here, and I'm going to just kind of take them apart and sketch them. Um, Use a different color for this one here. So the first triangle is the one that is shown here with the 41 degrees with the tower. So that is one triangle. And we know that the side length is 72. Okay, we don't know what the height of this tower is. Um, we can call this H. And we do know that the angle that it would make with the ground is a 90 degree angle because that's going straight up. So that's one possible triangle. I don't know if that's the one we want yet, but this is what we're, we're looking to find. The second part triangle I see is the other side of that shape, which is the one with the 35 degree angle. So if we put that and draw that in and we label all the parts, so there is a height to the tower. There's also the X, which is the wire that we're supposed to find, and we know it's 35 degrees. So I'm gonna look at label that as triangle two. Now the third triangle is just simply the big one. Okay, so that is the one where it goes across the base, goes up to 41, and then that's gonna to have to be, let me make that a little steeper so it's a little bit more accurate. Um, goes up 41 degrees, and then comes down 35 on the other side. So this is 35, 41, um, 72 is one, and then X is the other one. So this is the third triangle. So depending on what the question is asking for, um, we now have some possibilities in which to look at and apply some of our, some math to it. So the question does not ask for the height of the tower. 
So that means we probably don't really need to worry about these two, the first two, because these are asking for the tower height, or they're implying that we would have to solve for the height of the tower. Okay, we are looking just for the length of the unknown. So it's either going to be three, which looks like has the most information there. Um, question two does have an unknown for X. Okay, but there isn't another, but we don't really see a way to solve for that because we're only given one value right in there right now. So the best strategy here would be to go with the diagram that has the most information and that provides an unknown for us to solve. So we're gonna pick number three at this point. Okay, now, so we need to look at next to you here, we need to look at a solution. So the question, this, the family of questions that we have here, okay, and you have to take advantage of all the information that's given, we are going to be using the sine law. Okay, so we know there is another law, the cosine law, but this particular set of problems require us to use the sine law. So that is what we're going to focus on in trying to figure out what to do. So if we look at question three again, what are the properties of the sine law? How do we identify what we're supposed to be doing? Well, the sine law tells us that we have to look at an angle and we look at its opposite side. So I'm gonna do it in purple here and I'm just gonna circle the, the, the pairs that are important. So the pairs that we have here are 41 and X. Those two go together, okay? because it is the side opposite the angle. And then I'm gonna use another color, we'll try orange this time. We'll circle the 35 and then the 72 and put a line across there. So this is another pair that goes together. Okay, so this is kind of a really important thing that you have to look at with the sign laws. You have to look for pairs of um, sides and angles. Pairs of sides plus the angle. Okay, and they're always opposite to each other. Okay, so that is one of the key things in learning how to figure out how to, how to apply the sine law. Okay, then the second thing is that now we just have to write our equations. So, Let's just leave a little space here for the equations. So we know with the sine law, it's just simply a ratio. It's a ratio of the, of the angle um, over the side. Now to make it really easy, let's just make sure that the variable is already on the, on the top. So one of the ratios we could write is the value of x over the sine 41. Okay, we're gonna make it easy. We don't wanna make, we don't have to do extra work if we don't have to. We need to solve for X. So let's just put X on the top already so that we just have to minimize the amount of, of algebra that we have to do. Okay, and that's equal to the ratio of 72 over sine 35. Okay, now what if we didn't do it that way? Is there, is there actually any difference to, to this problem if we did it the other way? Okay, and the answer is actually no. You could write it this way. You could go sine of 41 degrees over X. Okay, and we just turn the other one over, sine of 35 degrees over 72. Okay, but the problem with this one is that we end up having, we do the cross multiply, but the X is on the bottom. So it, there's a little bit more in terms of just mentally doing the algebra. So I wouldn't do, do it this way just to, to keep things real easy given the choice. Okay, I would leave it with the X on top. And then if we do a very simple, um, all we have to do is bring sine 41 up to the other side of the equation. We're going to have 72 times sine 41 divided by sine 35. Okay, and then once we have that, that is a very simple calculation to do. We can plug that into our calculator. And when we work that out, we will get something approximately 82.4. Okay, and in this case, the units are meters because that is referring to the length of the wire. So that's hopefully um, a, maybe a little different way to look at how to do this word problem, okay? Always try a sketch first, just to recap it. 
okay? Simplify your sketch once you have it drawn, okay? Because sometimes it's really hard to see what we're looking at, especially if we have to sketch in things like the tower or sometimes there's a plane or whatever you have because what you really want to get down to is just the simple geometry of the shape that you're looking at. Okay, and often you might have to think about, well, how many things do we see there? Because they could ask you for different quantities. So you need to kind of look, train your eye to see what am I looking at in terms of the different shapes. So in this one, I said we could find three triangles. Okay, but two of them have quantities that we don't need to find. So the third shape is the, is the more appropriate one to use for our solution. Okay, and then thirdly, always look to see do are there any hints provided to find those solutions so we know we're going to be using the sine law so in this case it's not worth spending time to look at the cosine law which doesn't fit this pattern of of angles and sides anyway so right away you need to go to the method of solution that they're they're sort of leading you to okay and then figure out an equation Okay, by understanding how you set this up. So the key with the sine law, okay, is to look for these pairs of angles, okay, sides and angles. They always have to go together and they always have to be opposite to each other. Okay, so that is, uh, that's one of the more important things to remember about applying this law because you see that in the diagram um, right away, that we have angles and opposite sides. Okay, so... Um, that is a little bit more of a maybe um, a, a lengthier way to, to solve this question, okay? But it takes you through, I mean, I'm thinking hopefully a little more steps in terms of what your thought process should be. So when you see any word problem, okay, start to attack it by always drawing a picture, writing in all your unknowns, writing in all your knowns, and then kind of, and then start to look to see what are the basic shapes that we are after,